Good morning, John Knox Presbyterian Church. Thank you so much for joining us today. Before we get started with our announcements and worships, worship, uh, I wanted to teach, I wanted to teach you uh, a song, the beginning of a song that we're going to do. Um, it's a new hymn. It's out of our Presbyterian hymnal, the newer one, and um, it's called "Come Live in the Light." shine with the joy of the love of the Lord. So this is just to help you learn it. This is how it goes. I'll sing a couple lines, then have you join in after that. It goes like this. Listen. Come live in the light. Shine with the joy of the love of the Lord. Try that with me. Come live in the light. Shine with the joy and the love of the Lord. We are called to be light for the kingdom, to live in the freedom of the city of God. Try that part, we are called with me. We are called to be light for the kingdom, to live in the freedom of the city of God. We are called to act with justice. We are called to live tenderly. We are called to serve one another. To walk humbly with God. We'll sing a whole song in a little bit. Thanks for trying that with us. Miss Nancy. You gotta wait till he gives you the sign. Oh, good morning. That was beautiful, Dean. I cannot wait to sing that song. And welcome to worship at JKPC. Whether you're worshiping with us for on Facebook Live, don't forget to say hi to everybody or send a little emoji. Also, welcome if you're on YouTube later on. I wanted to share a couple of updates. Um, March is coming. Oh gosh, March is this next week. When is March? March is tomorrow? March is tomorrow. So Sherry Sheets says to sign up with the Swell St. Patrick's Day Luncheon ASAP. We're not sure if it'll be a virtual lunch or we'll be able to have lunch in the courtyard. But please let her know um, so she can prepare for that. And we're also hoping that if restrictions are lightened up, we go off at the purple tier. We'll be able to have some more um, events such as the drive-in bingo or other family events getting ready for Easter. Uh, what we will be having though is Bass Convention. It's the Christian Conference. It happens in Castro Valley. This year they're offering it free to everyone. It's virtual, but you need to sign up and register yourself individually online. And information is in the bulletin. And also a newsletter will be coming out this week, which will have more information too. And also wanted to mention today is Scout Sunday. We welcome all of our scouts. I won't be here in person, of course, but we have some special videos to show you. And one more thing is fish banks. I know people have been asking about fish banks. Families already have been receiving them. But if you'd like to help contribute to one great hour of sharing the fish banks, um, the coins that you put in can change the world. It can offer clean water, medicine, housing, a safe place to live for communities all around the world. I will have fish banks on the bulletin board as well as in the office. And we'll be collecting them either Palm Sunday or during the month of April. So please uh, don't forget, you could just definitely help out. Your change can change the world. But now let us prepare our hearts for worship. May God have something special to say to each and every one of you. And Dean will now prepare our hearts for worship with the prelude.
I'm on. Awesome. Great. Hey, um, one thing I wanted to just mention to you to make sure you knew that next week we have communion. So remember, be prepared to go ahead and develop, I mean, to uh, prepare some elements. And we will have drive through communion as well uh, out in the parking lot. So you can join us there if you want. You could even do both. You can have communion twice. Who wouldn't want more of Jesus? Tell me that. Uh, anyway, so I wanted to mention that to you. Uh, this week I was reviewing some of my Hebrew and I learned an interesting uh, uh, understanding of a couple of Hebrew words. Um, most of you know that Barach means bless and ara means curse. Now what's interesting is curse comes from an, uh, a meaning of restriction or binding or limiting. And so Barach means freedom or setting free. So whenever you think, I hope, of worship, you'll think of it as a blessing, is an opportunity to set you free. That's what we believe that Jesus does for us. Jesus does not want to restrict us. Jesus does not curse us. Jesus wants to give us blessing, freedom, new understanding of who we can be, who we can become. And that's what we're going to talk to you about, light and life, the light and life of Jesus today, as we again delve into the Gospel of John. So let us prepare ourselves as we continue to look ways in which God will bless us, bring us new freedom. Please pray with me. Most holy God, we are so thankful that you come to us to bring us new light and new life. Lord, help us to receive the blessing you offer us. Lord, we know that you have loved us from the beginning of time, from before we are even created. There's nothing we can do to interrupt or to stop that love. And yet so often we push that love aside. We long to make our own restrictions, our own limitations on who we can become because we're afraid. We're, we're not confident that we can become who you've called us to be, but you will love us no matter what. So help us to receive your blessing today and throughout this coming week as we find ways in which we can go ahead and bless those around us. Now be with us during this time of worship. In your son's name we pray, amen. This uh, song, two songs we're going to do this morning. One uh, says, and it's just a recitation of who our God is. And, you know, we're talking about the light, God being the light. Um, but I always try to find, there's always a certain sense of uh, phrases that really mean more to me. The second verse of this uh, hymn, Immortal, Invisible, says he, that God is unresting. He's always in movement. He's always uh, working on behalf of his loved ones, on behalf of us. But he's also unhasting, unresting and unhasting. He's always moving, but he's never in a rush. Now, wouldn't that be cool? Um, some of us are always moving and always in a rush, and some of us don't move too much and are never in a rush. But God's both of those things. I think that's awesome. Um, also, the next line of there says, God is not wanting. What would it feel like to never want anything? I, I, I don't want to go eat. I don't, want to, I don't have to want to do anything. Or, and he's also never wasting. Anyway, um, great song uh, this weekend, Immortal Invisible. Then we're going to go uh, bring our praise band from May in. We're going to do the video from uh, our service on May 24th and sing the song, Hear Our Praises. And, uh, you know, to me that today, um, I was at an, a, a tennis event at my club yesterday, and I'm beginning to see it, the light is coming as far as the darkness of COVID and the light. At the end of the tunnel, I think we all feel that. It's starting to come. We are allowed to kind of be close, not close together, but be in the same uh, vicinity outdoors for the first time. It's wonderful. There are celebrations coming. I don't think it's going to break out one day, but it's definitely growing on a daily basis. Worship with me, would you? Um, I like last week, uh, Steve led, and he said, stand up at home, sing along. I want to hear your voice, even though I can't. <laughs> okay. <laughs>
Now this is the verse I love. Unresting, unhasting, and silent as light, nor wanting, nor wasting, thou rulest in my thy justice like mountains, I soaring above thy clouds which were fountains of goodness and It's Kim Craft. I have been a scout leader for 16 years. And one thing that I wanted to share that Girl Scouts do is that we trade little pins called swaps. And the word swap stands for special, whatchamacallit, affectionately, pin someplace. And girls make swaps and leaders make swaps. It's been one of my favorite things to do. And we trade them at swap time. So you end up with necklaces or hats, 
Um, this one's really fun. It's a little heart. And um, this was from a 50s theme. So we had like little milkshakes and there's a fly swatter since you're out in nature a lot with Girl Scouts. So anyway, I just wanted to stop by and say hi. And um, even though we're not really having traditional scout meetings this year or the end of last year, you can always swap a smile. So this one is really fun. It's like a little campfire and I'm gonna share it right now. Hey Larry, catch. Thanks, Kim. Hi, I'm Larry Woods. Uh, I've been in scouting for the last 12 years, uh, walking Alex through the adventures of scouting. I was also a Cub Scout and a Boy Scout as a kid, growing up in Wisconsin and Minnesota. I really enjoyed scouting and still love it today. One of the things I've always liked about Boy Scouts is when you shake hands, you use your left hand. And the reason you use your left hand is because your left hand is closest to your heart. And pass the peace. Hi, I'm Sandy Placati, and these are my kids. And we are here to help pass the peace of Christ on this Scout Sunday with a Scout handshake, a hug, or a virtual high five. Peace, peace of Christ! Christ. Great job. Great job, Placatis and Larry and Kim. When we were trying to figure out what day would be good for Scout Sunday, because we have both Girl Scout, Boy Scout Sunday, so we can be flexible on what day we celebrate at the church, we knew today was a good one because Randy's ser um, sermon is about living into the light. Is that correct? Living? So about sharing your light, living the light, loving the light, and that's what Scouts do. They not only um, try to better themselves, they try to better the world around them. So since we couldn't have the scouts come here in person, we called out to our scouts and asked them to do a little video or share some pictures saying who they are, maybe what their rank is, as well as why do they love scouting. So here's a video, hope you enjoy. There's even a few scout leaders and a surprise at the ending. Hit it, Jerry. Hi, my name is Haley, and when I was in fifth grade, me and my Girl Scout troop, for our bronze award, um, we did a conflict resolution video for elementary schoolers to help them resolve their problems. I'm in seventh grade, and me and my Girl Scout... Today, we thank all of our Scouts for sharing their light. We want to include Hunter and Grant, who are in Arizona, but they're still very involved with Scouts and very involved with JKPC. And congratulations to Hunter, who just earned his arrow of light. I'm a B. I've been in Cub Scouts for four years. Something that makes me happy is doing Pinewood Derby cars. My name is Pon Lu, and I've been a Cub Scout for two years. What makes me happy is collecting food for for the community. My name is Madeline. I've been doing scouting for three and a half years, and the way scouting made me a better person was being open to new things. My name is Mia, and I've been in scouting for three and a half years. Scouting helps me shine my light because I'm able to help other people all over. My name is Chester, and I've been a scout for four years. Scouting has taught me to be kind and to serve others. I am now working on Dr. Charles Town Supernova Award. Hi, my name is Haley. I've been in scouting for almost three years now. I am in the scout rank and working up on my way to Tenderfoot. What I've learned in scouting is that we learn to serve others. And a few things that I've done is working at a food bank, picking up trash and delivering cards to the veterans. Hi, my name is Christian Placati and I've been in scouting for seven years. I'm a part of Troop 874 and love volunteering to help the community in completing merit badges with my friends. Hi, my name's Haley and I've been in scout since kindergarten and my favorite thing about being Girl Scout is selling cookies and helping our community. Hi, I'm Ryan and I've been a scout since first grade and my favorite part about scouting is camping. Hello, my name is Ian Ramsey and I have been a scout for seven years. 
One of the ways that Skylights makes me better is by getting me to do a good term daily. Hi, I'm Ella and I'm a Girl Scout in Troop 32806 in San Ramon. Girl Scouts has taught me to do acts of kindness and today my troop and I are going to be cleaning up the Iron Horse Trail. Hi JKPC, it's Marinette. I've been a Girl Scout for 12 years and my troop really loves to do acts of service for others and one of my favorite things that we do are these cool tie blankets and we do them just about every year. We haven't the past few years because COVID and everything but it's my favorite thing to do and we always take them to like women's shelters or just women and children's shelters in the area and it's super fun. Hi, I'm Katrina and I've been a Girl Scout for 10 years. Uh, my name is Bryn and I've been a scout for 13 years. Girl Scouts has helped me become a better leader and has shown me how I can help serve my community. I really love Girl Scouts because it's allowed me to uh, connect with my community and meet a lot of new people that I wouldn't have otherwise been able to meet. Um, and of course, we all love the Girl Scout cookie sale season. <laughs> Hi, my name is Will Placati. I'm an Eagle Scout with Troop 874. This is my 12th year in scouting. I'm a graduating senior at California High School, and uh, my favorite thing to do in scouting is go on camping trips uh, with my fellow scouts and friends. Hi, my name's Karina Placati, and I've been in Girl Scouting for 13 years. I started in kindergarten, and now I'm a graduating senior at California High School. I really enjoy scouting. I feel like it's opened up a lot of doors for me and pushed me towards experiences that I wouldn't have normally done if I hadn't been in scouting. And now we want to give a shout out to our JKPC scout leaders for sharing their light too. Hi, I'm Sandy Placati and these are my kids and I've been a Girl Scout leader since Karina was in kindergarten. Um, actually, I helped as a treasurer for many years and then grew into the role as a Girl Scout leader. It's been so fun to give these girls an opportunity to do fun and different things through the program. Um, lots of volunteering, community service, activities, events, overnights. It's been a lifetime of memories and we're sad to see it end with her aging out of the program. It helps build a lot of great characteristics for these kids. It supplements what they learn in school and helps them grow into great, wonderful people. Hi, it's Ewan here. Uh, I've been a scout leader now for about seven years. And what I really like about scouting is that I feel that it kind of forms an integral part of my faith life. In the Boy Scouts, we start off our meetings by saying the Scout Oath and the Scout Law. The Scout Oath starts with the Scouts promising to do their duty to God. The Scout Law, at the very end of it, the final term is a Scout is reverent. And so what I find, uh, to me, is that God actually bookends Scouting in the beginning and at the end, all that I do. And I get a lot out of that. It kind of you know, gives me a lot of nourishment in my faith life. And congratulations to Joanne Parker, who just retired after almost 45 years working at the San Francisco Bay Area and Golden Gate Scout Council offices. She was involved in the camping program department and field services. Joanne was brought up in the scouting life with her father being a scout ranger, and she's enjoyed watching her son grow into an Eagle Scout and, of course, supported him along the way. Joanne, congratulations, and thank you for sharing your light with so many scouts. Awesome job and uh, special congratulations, Joanne Parker. And a fun fact is before Joanne even came to JKPC, I knew her from um, her help with our, our scouts in going to one day family camp. So for over 10 years, I knew her, lots of emails, always so kind, so thoughtful. She's made an impact on so many scouts and their families' lives. So congratulations. And all Scouts will be receiving today, wait there's more, our uh, official Scout uh, Sunday 2021 patch. So if I missed any Scouts, let me know. We can include you in the reel. We're very proud of you. One more video we wanted to share was that some of the Scouts have finished either bronze, silver, or gold projects, or Eagle Scout projects. Projects they have done for the community, as well as for this JKPC campus. So especially since folks have not been on the campus, we thought some of them would be very interesting to find out 
what's been going on behind the scenes. And we want to thank the scouts for shining their light within themselves and bettering the community. Hi, my name is Haley, and when I was in fifth grade, me and my Girl Scout troop, for our bronze award, um, we did a conflict resolution video for elementary schoolers to help them resolve their problems. I'm in seventh grade, and me and my Girl Scout troop are working with Dublin Unified School District to create a shed for kids to get things like clothes and school supplies. Here's what my bronze award looks like, and once I complete my silver award, I'll get one that looks like it, but in silver. Doing these projects with my troop makes me feel good inside that we're helping other people in our community. I earned my silver award about three years ago when I built a drought tolerant garden down at Briar Hill Cabana Club and I'm excited to be earning my gold award over the next couple of years which will be focused on uh, nutritional education and implementing gardening experiences with younger children. It's me, Karina, and I created this project during the summer of 2017 for my Girl Scout Silver Award in the hope that everybody here on campus could enjoy a book and return a book. This year I completed my Gold Award project and the topic was teen awareness for organ donation. For that, I contacted multiple driver's permit places and had them send out a packet of information to students after they earned their driver's permit so that they could be more educated on making the choice of registering to be an organ donor. I also hosted an informational Zoom where I had guest speakers and I created a pink dot club at my school as well. Hi, my name is Will and this is my Eagle Project. I completed it fall of last year uh, along with the help of a few other scouts. The idea of this project was to be able to create an area where it would be easier to recycle uh, cans, compost, and uh, throw away trash. That way it would be better for our environment. We were able to complete this project with the help of a few uh, donations from Ace, Home Depot, and Lowe's uh, that covered a majority of the cost of this project. Uh, this project took about four different weekends uh, to complete and totaled over 130 service hours. We also want to thank Jeremy Judine, who took on as his Eagle project to create a much needed half circle bench so all can sit and enjoy. A big thank you to all the property elders who are involved with this project as well. Lastly, thank you Logan Bradshaw. The area around the JKPC dumpster and storage was overdue for a model. Logan of Troop 968 took this on as his Eagle Scout project and helped the area truly shine. All on the campus are very thankful for his hard work. This week's scripture is John 3, 16 through 21. Hear the word of the Lord. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. We have the grace of God in our lives um, that we that we can do. I just realized my computer went to sleep here. Darn it. Um, hopefully it will come back. So just give me a second. <clears throat> cool. We have such grace in God because of his love for us. And, um, you know, that scripture, John 3.16, is probably one of the most common scriptures uh, you know, it's kind of the one we all learned when we were young. And uh, so thanks for reading that. And Randy, we look forward to what you're going to do. We're going to sing This is Amazing Grace. You can stand up again if you want. Here we go. 
You're not getting that, are you, Jerry? Technical issues. Let me try once more. All right. Um, I, my computer fell off the piano when we were uh, in the middle of the service there, and I think that audio thing broke, but that's all right. We got me. I'm going to change patches here, and we'll see if we can sing this song. Jerry, I'll try to follow the same roadmap. Here we go. Love is mighty and so much stronger. The King of glory, the King above all kings. Sing with me. Who shakes the whole earth with mighty thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King above. Amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross. so much yeah <laughs> technical difficulties oh my gosh who would have thought um, but it, you know what happens but we continue on and that's why we love Facebook live because you get to see the bloopers as they happen which is so awesome um, but uh, yeah it was great having the scouts uh, having all the scouts the scouts projects I don't know if you've noticed all the things the scouts have done around here um, there are a couple other projects that have happened uh, as well that uh, have helped with our landscaping. Um, it's been, we've really benefited a lot and we've had a chance to uh, offer a space for scouts to meet when we have not been in shelter in place. And uh, we look forward to having that happen again. 
So I myself was a scout for a while and I loved, uh, learned a lot about camping. Uh, and it was awesome, an awesome time. And one of the things that I think our kids love that uh, our kids Joe and I had, um, they loved, they loved camping. In fact, they're, they're taking that on with their own kids as well. So that's really great. Uh, but today is, I want to talk a little bit about this uh, verse. One thing, one part of it is, uh, Gene had, Dean had mentioned, uh, is one that is well known. And, uh, but then it moves into some other, other statements there in those verses that are a little bit unsettling. Um, but I think something that for us to learn, to learn about, and to, again, to uh, look at our life. And, and again, as we've been talking about the theme for our time, is cultivating the spirit. How do we cultivate the spirit? How do we, how do we uh, uh, see the light? How do we receive the light? How do we share the light? Um, how do we receive God's new life, this freedom? Remember the blessing I mentioned? A sense of freedom that God gives us and then share that with those around us, bless those around us. That's, I wanna address that today. But before I do, I'd like us to pray uh, and ask the Lord God and the Holy Spirit to help filter out all that stuff that I say and help bring it to focus for you, funnel down into your heart what you need to hear today. So let us have a word of prayer. Oh, most amazing, gracious, loving God. We have benefited in so many ways from those around us, from the community of scouts that have uh, shared their talents and their hard work with us. And we are so grateful for that. We thank you for the many people that have offered uh, their service. And Lord, we uh, also have benefited from uh, our community of faith family. And I appreciate Ewan talking about his faith and how it intersects with scouting. Bookends the oath and the law scouting. How it bookends uh, his understanding of scouting. And now, Lord, we come to you as we look into a passage that is partly familiar with us and some a little bit that may cause us a little bit of discomfort. But Lord God, you have this, these words for us and you seek to share with us uh, some new understanding. So I pray we'll be open to that. Now, Lord, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable to you. For you are rock. You are our redeemer. Amen. Well, many of you know that I was in Iowa for 17 years, 14 years at one church a little in a little town called Rhinebeck, Iowa. About 1,600 people were there, one square mile. Awesome place to raise your kids. Um, and, and as most of you know, I think when you think about Iowa, you, th you may think about it being flat, but it's not flat, I've learned. It is open. And, and another thing that's wonderful about that town um, is that the next closest town was Morrison, with 89 people. So there's not a lot of light pollution going on at night, which is amazing and wondrous in so many ways. And, and I want to talk a little bit about the contrast between light and dark, because when I would walk the dog those nights and look up at the sky from horizon to horizon, since it's so open, the stars were brilliant. There was no competing lights. The colors were amazing. We, we uh, you know, saw the saw sun dogs and all kinds of things there that you see because of light pollution, but we didn't have to deal with that. In fact, one of the, uh, one of the marks of Rhinebeck was their annual fireworks display because out in their, their park area, they had a, a great space that they would spend, people would spend all kinds of money for fireworks and people would come from all over the area the close proximity to Rhinebeck to come see those fireworks display because of the dark background, those fires were just amazing. They were fabulous. That contrast between the dark and the light was so evident. So I want to talk about that. And I, I, in some ways we forget that, that dark is helpful. Um, I, I was talking to Joan about this a little bit and she reminded me that when she was at college, she went caving. And about the time that she went down deep into a cave with a group of people and the leader there lit a match and what all of a sudden that contrast between that dark cave, you couldn't even see your hands in front of your face and then that light that came from that one single flame. So there's this contrast between light and darkness that I think we need to, to again look at. In the very beginning of this ancient text called the Bible that we read, 
we have this contrasting imagery of light and dark. And I want to read to you now Genesis 1 to 5. <clears throat> In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. The Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And he separated the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Now a couple of things I found interesting as I was reading this is if we remember... The day starts for the Jew at sunset, which I find really interesting. That's the beginning of time for the day, is the sunset. Then you have the darkness, and then the light. But it's the Spirit of God which is hovering over the deep, and it's first dark, and the darkness pervades the universe, but God brings in light. With a word, he says, let there be light. You know, this creation story is highly symbolic. And, and it begins with the division. The creation story begins with the division between darkness and light. This is the first thing that God does in the creation. The word light, actually, if you look it up, is found over 250 times in the Bible. It has 174 in the Old Testament, or Hebrew scriptures, if you want to be more accurate. And 89 times in the New Testament, the same number, if you remember my introduction, of the people that live in Morrison. Though I don't think there's a connection. But we are in the Gospel of John during the season. So let's move now back into the Gospel of John from Genesis. The passage read today is not the first time light is mentioned. The first introduction we have of light are found in John 1. John 1 to 12. 2, 1 to 12 and I want to read to you John 1, 4, and 5. This is what it says in the Gospel of John. In him was life, and that life was the light of all humankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The him in this passage, of course, is Jesus. He's also called the Word in this introductory section. Life and light are used as synonyms. There's something that it's vibrant. Contrast to a, a static existence. There's pulsating images of movement, something which affects all that it encounters. Light and life. The life of Jesus makes a difference, not just for all humankind, but for all creation. The light of Jesus will make a difference in our understanding of life. And it chases away all that seeks to overcome it. Light. The darkness will not overcome the light. I want to read to you one more section. This is found in John 1, 6-9. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light, but came only as witness to the true light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. Again, the light is Jesus. Jesus comes and brings true enlightenment. And Jesus is the closest person to being in the image and likeness of God that we have. For you see, Jesus is also God. And you may ask me, so how does that work? How does that work that this light that comes into the world is also God? Well, I want to let you on a little secret. I have no idea. I don't know. But that's what we believe. We believe Jesus is the true light, and if you receive him, the light can only come into your life, but it can shine through you. And you will be able to share that light of Jesus. And you will share it with everyone with whom you come in contact. And all those who receive that light will be called children of God. Now, before we address this passage that was read today by PJ... We also have this passage about Nicodemus. We talked about that a little bit last week, you know, that he came in the cover of night. You know, night is, is not so much a, 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 a problem. It, it's not so much the fact that it um, was antithetical to light, but it's in the darkness, you know, in, at dusk time, when you're looking out at a meadow, if you've ever gone camping, 
and you've been out in the wild and there's wildlife out there, you know how hard it is to see things in the dusk. It's hard to see creatures that are grazing in the twilight. But now I want to back, jump back to the passage for today. The first sense of our passage today is probably the most famous of all passages. You know, it's even found at all the football games that you ever see or used to see on TV. You know, there's always someone in the end zone that's showing John 3.16. In fact, I sometimes wondered if they have special tickets. that says, I'm carrying a sign for John 3.16, so I need to be seated in the end zone. Well, one of the passages that talks about light is also found in Isaiah. And it says, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. And those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. So it's pretty clear from our reading that we have a choice. Remember? Again, it says here, He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. We have a choice. God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. That's not real easy to hear, is it? That word condemned. Now, I think it'd be better translated as judged. Whoever believes in him is not judged, but whoever does believe stands judged already. You know, this judgment of God, it says here, will happen. Now, the wonderful thing about this whole phrase that's going on here is, first of all, it's not our responsibility to judge others. It is God's responsibility. God will do that judgment. And I believe that God will make that choice. will make that decision. And, and not necessarily does it mean when it says, do you believe in Jesus, does it mean you need to say the word name of Jesus or not? Or will God judge you? in your actions, and in, in the faith that you've received, that you have, that you've been introduced to. You know, there's that famous passage in Matthew 25 where we have the sheep and the goats. And each of those groups of people come before Jesus and call him Lord. And some, he says, you follow through in your belief, and you serve those in need. And you are the sheep. And the ones that are called goats are the ones who saw around them the people and said they believed in Jesus and yet did not act. The judgment is left up to God, not to us. What's wonderful is this is also in context of Scripture, and it's in context of a book written by the most famous, I think, of all Christians of the first century is Paul. And Paul writes in Romans 5.8 that Jesus died for us while we were still enemies. We are not the ones to judge that. It is only God. But Jesus, we believe, provides a way to have a relationship with God, a relationship with each other, and a relationship with all of creation. That relationship with our world is broken. And John makes it even more clear with the verses in 19 and 20. This is what it says in verses 19 and 20. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light. It will not come into light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. Remember I told you there'd be some uncomfortable verses in this section. And I think the condemnation or the judgment is one, but this also is another one. But evil is not defined here. I think we can safely say that evil is the opposite of good. Just as I talked about barach is the opposite of ara, blessing, opposite of cursing. Whatever you call good, loving people, caring for creation, respecting yourself, having with a relationship with anything or anything is the opposite of evil. Good is dynamic. It's life-giving where evil is static and self-defeating. But we like to think it is the evil spirit who tempts us. And we like to think evil is something outside of us begging to come in. And yet I would say 
that we need to hearken back to the words of Pogo, comic strip character in the middle of the 20th century, created by Walt Kelly. And there's a section in there where Pogo says, we have met the enemy and he is us. You know, there aren't good people and evil people in this world. We are both. There is no them that is evil. There is no them that is condemned. There is no them who are the ones who will reap all the consequences. Them is us. No matter how far we grow in our faith, no matter how mature we are, there are still times that we have evil inclinations. That is true. That is what Scripture tells us. Not all the time, but there are those times when we make decisions for ourselves alone without thinking about those around us. There are times when we look down on someone else because we need someone lower on the ladder than ourselves to make ourselves feel so much better about who we are and who we're becoming. How many of us judge people by their appearance, their speech, by their smell, by their level of education? That is evil. We don't have the responsibility nor the privilege to judge other people. We do not make it through a week without, at some point, pushing other people aside so we can fulfill our agenda. How many are, of us are willing to give up what we think we deserve so others can eat or be clothed or have shelter or they're able to become the person God created them to be? How many of us are willing to move out of our comfort zone to embrace someone we don't think deserve God's grace. I know you're tired of hearing me talk about this, but I just feel like this is part of it. This is, this is the rock bed of racism. We have a tendency to think that we deserve, we are entitled to all that around us that comes within our grasp without looking out for those around us who are in greater need than we are. At some point, we have to acknowledge that we need God's help to overcome this darkness, this evil within us. We are, as Matthew says, to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. We are to be, bring, be change agents. We are to bring hope and joy and peace, not despair and sorrow and dissension. How often do we make a sarcastic remark or denigrate someone in our minds or even in our small group? Because they don't live up to our expectations. My friends, I think that's on the verge of being evil. Because it's placing you as judge over those around you. It's not just you, it's me too. And there comes a time when we need to have the light and life come into us to help change us so we can also be people who usher out the light and usher out the life to those around us. We can be people who take away the restrictions, the limitations, and provide people the freedom. We need to be people who do not curse others, but instead bless them. That's what the scripture is telling me today. We need to stop at looking at the world around us and talking about what's wrong with the world. You know, last week I talked about God gives us comfort and God gives us challenge. Well, I'm sorry, today, today is a day of challenge. But the comfort comes because we have a God who loves us more than anything else. And as Dean's saying, this is amazing grace. He went to the cross for us, each and every one of us, to be his son or daughter. And that is the comfort but it does not erase the challenge. 
We can't receive one and not receive the other. And that's what I believe the Christian faith is all about. It's about receiving the comfort and the redemption from God so we can pass it on to those around us. Sometimes the darkness can seem overwhelming. But if we're willing to let Jesus come into us, it, he will help change us to transform us. And we will need to walk with less fanfare. We will need to be more merciful. We will need to act more equitably when we move into the light. So let us be open to the light. Let us be willing to help it expose our darkness so we may be cleansed, we may receive the light, and we may shine with God's light through us as true followers of our Lord and Savior. Amen. Please pray with me. Our God, so many times that uh, I think I have failed to allow your light come into my life. So many times I like to uh, make decisions that are benefiting of me and not thinking about how it affects those around me. So many times I feel comfort in being able to judge people and to decide whether they're a sheep or whether they're a goat. And yet that's not my call. So Lord, I ask now, do you help me to receive the forgiveness which you offer? Help all of us to receive the forgiveness which you offer. And help us to be, be people that are willing to come into the light. May your light shine through us. And may it give life to all humankind in your son's name. Amen. Thank you, Randy. Thank you for that challenge today in our lives. Challenge to live in the light. I don't know if you've ever met someone. I have. I meet people that just have light about them. It's just, they seem to exude light, the peace of Christ. This song uh, calls us to come live in the light, to shine with joy, to shine with love. Let God, let people see those things in our lives, to be light for the kingdom, to be free. The chorus says, we're called to act with justice. We're called to love. We are called to serve one another. A uh, wonderful song. It's new to us, so you may not know it that well. You won't know it that well unless you were here at the beginning of the service. And even then, not so well. So let's try it together. Try to sing along. At least connect with the text today, would you? Here we go. <laughs> Thank you, Dean. 
this is a time now when we come together to pray, pray for one another, um, pray for ourselves, pray for our own needs, our own redemption, but also to remember that uh, the tiku alam, repairing the world, that's what partly our faith is all about. So uh, please pray with me and we will close with the Lord's Prayer. Most Holy God, we come to you, uh, first of all, thinking of praises and uh, the chance that uh, I got to see in person yesterday, little Addie Weehee, um, such a joy to see her uh, uh, moving around, looking around, um, after all the things that have been going on there, thank, thankful for that. Lord, I've been hearing uh, how some people have been finding work. And what a blessing it is for them to again be able to do that. There are still those out there looking for employment. And Lord, we ask that you lift them up. You encourage them. Help them to find that place which will help them to use their gifts and their talents. Um, Lord, we also give thanks for um, uh, your hand on Fally, uh, Cirilla's sister-in-law, who uh, had a biopsy done on her neck and the mass was found to be benign. So we give you praise for that. We are so grateful. Um, we ask though that you'll be with those that are still struggling with uh, disease and illness, um, uh, uh, being recovering from surgery. Uh, we s continue to pray for Deborah, for Howard's sister. Uh, deals with the issues of needing a kidney transplant and, and also dealing with cancer. We ask you to be with uh, Bill and Judy Spruitt as Bill moves into hospice care. Um, just pray you'll be with them as they encounter this part of their journey. Um, ask us, help us to find ways we can continue to support them. Uh, we are also uh, asking you to be with the couriers. Um, as Megan's mother passed away, recently and continue to help them as they recover from this this time of loss or they find new ways in which to live their lives uh, giving thanks for her presence in their lives and uh, Lord we also have a number of people in our congregation who we ask to help them re recover or to deal with their, their illnesses um, their recovery from surgery I think of Bev Mitchell and Bob and Sharon Smith with uh, Beth Brizzy and Cleo Ernst, with Joe and Valerie Coakley, um, and then others that I haven't heard of recently. I just pray, Lord, you'll continue to I'll put your hand on them. And I pray that if we uh, have a moment that we'll give someone a call in this congregation or send them a note and giving them thanks for their presence and find ways in which we can encourage them. Most Holy God, you have called us to be your people, to be your children. Um, and that's a decision we need to make. We need to decide whether we're going to let the light and life into our lives or not. But Lord, help us on our journey. Help us on our walk. Um, you're the one who gives us the strength. You're the one that provides the light for the path. You're the one that provides the ear that can listen. You're the one that provides us the faith which will buoy us up in the times of tumult. And so now, Lord, we come to you as seeking to follow you more closely and to be your disciples. And we now say that prayer together, which your son taught his followers, that begins, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Wouldn't it be great to live in light all the time? I don't know, maybe we wouldn't get to sleep then, but uh, that's kind of the vision I, I have is that we always can be in the light. Always, even if it's dark outside, we can always have the light of God in us. We're going to go out today with a song that says, Shine, Jesus, shine through me. Fill this land. Fill me with the Father's glory. Blaze, spirit, blaze. Here, we, uh, Let's try it.
Now, receive God's blessing. Receive God's freedom that he gives us. Do not provide others with curses that restrict or limit or bind them, but instead share that blessing, that freedom that God has given you. That is our calling, to receive the freedom and to pass it on. Let us go and be known for our love for those around us. This is how they'll know we are Christians, by our love. Let us celebrate our blessing with those around us. In Christ's name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you.